I'm a special one. I wish I was right. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to OmniFit TV. This is your host Omar speaking and today's video is going to be a reaction to the World Cup draw. Now, uh, I think this is probably one of the most memorable draws I've ever had to witness. I'm going to go ahead and start talking about my first impressions or rather the things that I found most provocative that evoked the most memorable reactions from myself as I watched. First one being that Brazil's group is basically 80% of the group they were a part of in the 2018 edition of the tournament, and that is one of the weirdest coincidences I've seen. You know, it's it is very strange. Uh, the more weird, the weirder coincidence that we I've gotten used to seeing uh, was Argentina drawing Nigeria in the same group, and that's happened on almost every occasion since 2006, I think. You can uh, actually comment and let me know if that's true because I can't remember the last time I checked that stat, but it was still. You know, it's still weird because we have seen them in the same group for a long time. Now they won't be a part of the tournament. So, Brazil being in the same group as Serbia and Switzerland, who are both very good teams, again, for the second successive tournament, is very odd to me. The second thing is Argentina drawing Mexico. That should make for a very spicy encounter. <laughs> it should make for a very interesting encounter. The third is having the African and Asian champions drawn together in the same group, in Group A. Now, I think that the groups that are going to call for the most surprises are Groups A, B, and G. Top spot in Group A is assured for the Netherlands. In my humble opinion, they've done very well. They have done very well to get this far. Their work and their performances throughout the World Cup qualifiers were considerably convincing in comparison, you know, to their last international outing in the Euros. Qatar's formed has dipped, but that won't necessarily have any bearings on the overall performance because there are certain things that I will put into context later on in this video, but, you know, one step at a time. Of course, to Ecuador, they have a very slim chance of making it through, but they could cause a couple of upsets here. I'm not necessarily sure if people are slating them or not. They seem to be a very neutral team in regards to the overall audience that was watching the draw yesterday. People are more careful or more, uh, what's the word, invested in both Senegal and Qatar, and they would easily assume that Either the Asian or African champions could finish second in their group. But I'm pretty sure Ecuador won't be an easy side to face because, in all seriousness, they are not. They're not a big team. But they are quite capable of causing disruptions to this group. In regards to Group B, England, Iran, and the USA. With the possibility of Wales, Scotland, or Ukraine joining in. Now, this is a very weird group. It seems quite political, to be honest. Uh, I would honestly say that first place isn't necessarily assured. This is just my humble opinion. I don't rate Southgate. I don't think many do as a manager. Uh, this is a very strong U.S. side. I think they could do very well. It's all about the U.S. and England for the most part. And I can't discount Iran. I genuinely can't. They have had a uh, very, very dominant Asian qualifiers campaign. The spine upon which this team of Iranian players is built is, uh, you know, it's, it's impressive. They're stable. They're strong. Now, based on who joins this group, and I would assume that Wales are the favorites, there could be a couple of fairly entertaining games here. In regards to Group C, now, Argentina could do extremely well to finish in first place. I would personally predict that they would finish in first if they would maintain consistency because they've been quite unpredictable throughout the last couple of tournaments they've played in. They've lacked structure tactically. They haven't been consistent, but if they can manage to actually maintain a certain level of organization, then they will easily finish first. In regards to the other teams, I would say Saudi Arabia have a very good manager in charge. They're much stronger than they were four years ago. Uh, Hervé Renard was managing Morocco in the last World Cup, and Morocco put on some heroic performances despite ending up in the group of death. They gave every team they encountered in that group hell and then some. 
And I would assume that Saudi Arabia under Renard are going to be much braver. I can't necessarily predict if they'd finish second, but it is going to be a war for second place. Poland have a stable side. They could easily, you know, pull off a couple of surprises. But Mexico. Mexico, in my humble opinion, is a team that could easily finish second because they just, they perform quite well at the World Cup. Don't even get me started on Ochoa if he's even going to be playing in goal because he, that man just shows up at World Cups. I'm not necessarily sure where Ochoa goes within the period and time that we have to wait for the World Cup to happen again, but that man was just made for the tournament. In Mexico, I've always prided themselves on heroic performances at the World Cup. It's enough to note how well they played last time out. Beating Germany was no you know, simple feat. So I would easily predict that they'd finish second. I'm kind of carrying on with the predictions, and at a certain point, I know you've realized that I'm not predicting who will finish second in every group, but I'm noting the predictions that I myself have found myself more focused on, and the ones that I think are much easier to make, because I like to leave I like to leave this to the imagination more so than, you know, just state a pseudo fact because you know nothing is certain in football, and it, and the potential here is groundbreaking. On to Group D now. You have France, Denmark, and Tunisia. Tunisia were horrible in the last World Cup. They were just outright horrible. Denmark are definitely going to go into this with something to prove. I think they ended up with France in the same group last time out, although I am not sure at this very moment. France are currently the reigning champions. They they've still got the same <clears throat> sorry, they still got the same crop of players they had last time out for the most part. Uh and in my humble opinion, they have been o- underwhelming. Not to say overwhelming. They have been underwhelming tactically. They still have the same issues they had under Deschamps last time out. And I think their luck ran out against the Swiss in the Euros. And it may as well run out in the World Cup this year. But we will see. They could easily top this group. No questions asked. Or they could finish bottom. You know, the, the champion's curse is real. It could hit them. It could not. It could hit them at different stages. We'll see. In regards to the team that could join up here... Not necessarily certain. And I'm not necessarily certain which team could add the most disruptions to this. So I'll leave that for its time. Now, Group E is perhaps the spiciest group of the tournament with Germany and Spain ending up in the same group. Japan are extremely unlucky. They usually end up in a group where they have a fighting chance to actually make it out. Spain have been very well organized under Enrique. They've done well in the last tournament. They've been on form for a long time. He's built a very strong team. The Germans have found their character under Flick once again. And it's been a long time coming. The rebuilding process in comparison to uh, their last couple of outings in the tournaments has been... You know, it's been happening. It's been progressing quite well. And we will have to wait and see how impactful Flick's tenure has been thus far when the World Cup kicks off. I think that this group is fairly easy to predict, obviously, but first place is extremely difficult to predict. I'm not sure which of Germany or Spain will finish first, but it's fair to say that either one of them will finish second and that whoever joins this group will crash out alongside Japan. Group F is genuinely bound to be one of the most entertaining groups of the tournament. Now, Belgium, Canada, Morocco, and Croatia. Belgium and Croatia are definitely going to fight for first spot. I think too many people are discounting Morocco and Canada. Canada are not an easy side whatsoever. They've built a very organized side they've outdone both their neighbors mexico and the u.s they finished first in their qualifications group i think they're not to be underestimated in any sense morocco are brave they've always been an extremely brave side when they play in the world cup north african sides in general morocco tunisia and algeria have always had that reputation last time out they had her Renar at the helm they were a much stronger side but they still have that same attacking personality. They still they still have that same attack minded approach, and I think it will do them well. Canada will, you know, the match between those two is definitely going to be extremely entertaining. Croatia, Croatia may have the same the remnants of their 
you know, of the generation that took them to the World Cup final, but I think they are equally as valid. Belgium's golden genera- generation is falling off a bit, although they still have something to prove. I'm not necessarily going to say that they are dark horses in this tournament. They are weaker than they were last time out. They finished third, and I think they could have done a lot better. They they could have actually gone on to win the World Cup last time out, but luck was not on their side. I can't say who will finish second in this group. Croatia could pip Belgium for first. Belgium could pip Croatia for first, or we could see something extremely different. I remember in the 2014 World Cup when Costa Rica were joining the group of death with Uruguay, Italy, and England, and they actually finished first, and Uruguay finished second, which I don't think anyone predicted. So this just has all the makings to be quite an exciting group with much much more space given to each side to perform. Brazil, Serbia, Switzerland, and Cameroon. Now, this is a very, very funny group to me. Uh, Brazil are now in the same group minus Cameroon that they were in in 2018. Cameroon are going to be a very stubborn team to break down. Serbia and Switzerland are each good teams. And Brazil are Brazil. You can easily assume that they will do extremely well to finish in first. Although, I don't know who's going to finish in second based on... You know, based on how well they are. I think Switzerland and Serbia are equally paced. They could... uh, easily be you know go neck and neck in their encounters and it will depend on the results that they manage to scrape past their opponents with in regards to brazil and cameroon now group h now this one's a weird one portugal are extremely weak tactically so i don't necessarily think they're going to finish first easily uh group h jesus christ you have uruguay and ghana drawn in the same group the the road that both of these teams have had throughout the last decade Uruguay are a much weaker side this time around than they were in the last edition of the tournament they barely scraped by in order to qualify for it to begin with Ghana are not the side that you would expect to do extremely well not the same side that was there in 2010 by any means but they managed to put on some very good performances against Nigeria to qualify for the World Cup to begin with. They will definitely be out for revenge. They will be out for blood. And that will probably be one of the most anticipated games of the group stage and of the tournament in general. Now, South Korea, however, will need Sun to be firing on all cylinders. I don't necessarily assume that they could do well bar that they aren't organized they need to be extremely organized against any of their opponents in this group in order to have a chance of finishing second they are by no means the weakest team of this group i would personally say that ghana is the weakest team in this group individually that could be an argument to be made but this group is perhaps one of the most if not the most unpredictable group in the whole tournament and that you know we'll have to uh, wait and see how that plays out Now about the tournament as a whole, this is an exception. This tournament's date having to take place in November of this year, halfway into next season, is going to play a huge role. There is a very big positive to take away from this because from June until November, there will be two international breaks within which each team taking part in this tournament will have time to experiment, to play multiple friendlies, to actually prepare themselves, build the skeleton that is required to take their starting 11s into the first games of their respective groups in the tournament. And this is one of the biggest highlights. You know, usually teams don't even get that whenever we have a World Cup set in the summer, and that's always been the norm. Now that it's set in winter, each team is going to have enough time, each manager is going to have enough time to actually experiment and test things out before the tournament, and I think that is huge. Now, as you all know, we have been accustomed to seeing some of the grandest surprises on the grandest stage in football history. We wait for them. We cheer those who actually take them on. And we just, we enjoy them. Everyone wants to watch a giant fall from time to time. We're definitely going to see that in this tournament. We're probably going to see early eliminations that we didn't expect would take place. We're going to see late eliminations for teams that we didn't expect it to go through. We have only ever had eight teams 
who have won the tournament, and I would personally like it if we were to see a newcomer take home the trophy because it would be good for football and it would be exceptional in making this World Cup a much more memorable affair than people would have thought possible. And that, my friends, is it for today's video. I'm going to do a much more in-depth analysis of every group once the tournament arrives. Uh, if you like this video, please comment and like. Uh, let me know what you think about any of my uh, comments or, uh, you know, uh, predictions, my analysis, my thoughts on any of these teams in the comment section below. I would genuinely like there to be discourse and I would genuinely like you all to be a part of it. Uh, I will leave all of our links to our social media accounts. You will find the Facebook page to where we post our, all of our Arabic content and the link to our Arabic YouTube channel as well. And that's it for now. Once again, I will see you next time. The whistle blows. Cheers, everyone. Thank you all so very much for watching. Ramadan Karim to all of our Muslim viewers. And have a nice day.